very good. Are we live yet? Are we live yet? Should be there soon if we're not. Hello everybody, how are we doing? Well good. Uh, today we're going to be doing stocks, which is really super basic, so this will be more of a... I'll talk to you guys more today, because after I get the stock on the stove, I just have to wait for it to get to a simmer, uh, and then I leave it sit for four hours. Um, stock is something that you make a lot if you work in kitchens. Uh, a lot of kitchens make their own stocks and sauces from scratch. It says, this is very bas basic stuff. The base for any stock is mirepoix. What mirepoix is is 50% onions, 25% carrots and celery. There's many variations to it. You can add, you know, parsnips or celeriac or all sorts of vegetables. Basically, the more stuff you put in the pot, the more flavorful um, stock you're going to get. But you're essentially making broth to make other stuff out of. We're going to make French onion soup next week, which is going to be half and half chicken and beef stock. So, uh, if for, for a professional cook, this is basically, this is making toast. This is making toast. It's going to be a really easy section. Anybody can do this. You're basically just throwing stuff in the pot. The only thing you have to regulate is how hot it gets. Um, there's three rules of stock. You never cover it, never stir it, never boil it. That is the, uh, that is the three main rules of stock. So uh, we have our beef trimmings from uh, when we did the fabrication yesterday. If you end up fabricating your own chicken, you can make your own chicken stock. If you uh, you know fabricate any of your own beef, you're going to have trimmings left over. You can use that to make a really nice broth, to make a soup or a sauce or whatever else you want. Uh, it's always going to taste better if you make it yourself because uh, you're imparting a lot more flavor. And of course it's fresher. It doesn't have preservatives or anything else in there that the normal stocks do, so they can sit at room temperature. Um, in those little containers. Now that being said, there's nothing wrong with store-bought stock, um, but if you want to do something fancy and you have the ingredients laying around, it's a really nice thing to do. Look at that look at my gaming hype. Can we get some look at my gaming badges up in this piece? Hype it! Okay, so just to get started, we're just gonna chop all of our stuff. I should probably get a trimming bowl. The nice thing about doing stock as well is you really don't have to worry about the size of the cuts and stuff like that. You're not going to be using any of the the actual vegetables themselves. You're just using them to impart flavor. So it's very easy to get <laughs> your cuts right because they don't mean anything. Obviously, you don't want to throw a whole half onion in there or anything, but you do you do roughly dice it. the onions out of the way first so we can not cry about it. Oh, it doesn't have very much peel at all. Also a little trick, if you want to um, have a golden stock, like if you're making chicken stock and you want to have that brown color, uh, you can take a brown onion and leave the leave the skin on it or uh, throw a piece of skin inside of the stock. It'll uh, it'll darken up the the color of the stock. Uh, so we're just gonna go half here and then just cut it into chunks. A little more, a little more skin than I thought. But really, the size and shape, as long as they will cook in about four hours, you're good. And obviously, the more the more product you put in there, as far as uh, whatever whatever meat product or <coughs> carcass or trimmings or whatever you have in there, it's going to taste uh, more potent. It's very hard to go overboard on that. Okay, so we're just going to put this stuff in the pot. So we have about that many onions, quite a few. Next, we're going to go to celery. I'm just going to use up about half of this, it looks like. Celery is a pretty dirty vegetable. Um, when you're making like a stock or something, it's going to cook for so long that it's not a huge deal if there's a little bit of dirt on there, but always rinse your veggies. It's never a bad thing to do. Uh, 
maybe a little more than 25%. That's okay, though. Now, all the leaves and stuff that you maybe normally wouldn't use is great, is great for stock. That was really bad for your knife, by the way. I would not really recommend doing that very often, but it's fun. Let's see. Let's go on three carrots. Uh, not going to use the very, very top of them, but that's that's it. That's all we're cutting off. That's actually just about right. We got about 50% uh, onion, 25% carrot and celery in the pot. Uh, we're going to take these beef trimmings, I'm going to pick through them a little bit. I didn't do the best job of clearing off the fat and stuff. Mmm. Let's not get any blood on myself, shall we? That's all gravy. Uh, once we get it on the stove and start getting it heated up, I'll talk, uh, I'll talk more about uh, how you're going to cool it down and do all that stuff. But I gotta get this started and get my hands washed. Clean up a little bit. Yeah, there's some fatty pieces in here I don't want. Uh, do want that. Do want that. Oh god. Don't really want that. Alright, that'll do. So that is, this right here is how you make beef stock. And then we're just gonna fill it up with water, uh, cold water, and then we're gonna bring it up to a very gentle simmer and go from there. Uh, same thing goes with chicken. You just throw a chicken carcass or bones in there, uh, pork stock, yeah, you name it. Fish stock has some uh, different things you can do with it. There's usually different variations of the mirepoix uh, that you make for fish stock. But it also depends on what kind of fish you're using. Now there's white stock and brown stock. Uh, this would be more of a, uh, well, it's a brown stock because it's beef, but... Um, Sometimes with beef stock, you'll add other root vegetables like uh, a parsnip, celery ac, uh, turnips, things of that nature. Shrimp stock is uh, really amazing stuff. Shrimp shells have a ton of flavor in them. All right, so the next step is to fill this up with cold water. Then we'll talk about how you cool it down and all that stuff. I'm obviously not going to stay here for four hours and um, cook the stock. I'll just take a break in my cast and uh, do it there. sanitation station later. Now you can also saute your vegetables. I never found that to be add that much more flavor, but to each their own. Okay, one thing you can do as well is add more water to it if it starts evaporating too much, but that should not be a problem. Alright, so there we have water, onions, carrots, celery, we're going to put this on a pretty aggressive high temperature to start with. The idea is to get it to the laziest bubble possible. You want it right in that 170 to 180 range. Um, water is at a true simmer at 180 degrees. And what, you, what you really want is just a super lazy bubble happening, and you want that to go on for about at least four hours. Four to six is pretty much standard, though. If you're trying to make a really potent stock, you can actually leave it on the, the uh, you can leave it overnight. All right, we touched that little piece of beef, so let's wash our hands, and then we'll clean up uh, our station, and then we'll talk about cooling down stock and how to handle it. Once again, the three rules of stock is never boil, never cover, never stir. Uh, you want to get it to a lazy bubble and leave it as still as possible for as long as possible. Now, you can also do this with just vegetables. You can make vegetable stock like this for vegetarians in the house. You can use mushrooms and any kind of vegetable you want to make a really flavorful vegetable stock. Of course, we'll sanitize everything after the show. Did get a little bit of beef on the counter. Okay. 
The reason you start with cold water is you want to heat it up as gently as possible. Uh, if you add super hot water to the beef, it's going to cause weird stuff to come off of it, and it's just kind of, kind of gross. Yes, never boil, stir, or cover. Um, the color reason is that there's a lot of impurities in meat, uh, whether we want to realize it or not. Meat is not the um, cleanest of things, so there's a lot of stuff that comes off of uh, meat products when you cook them in water. You'll actually see after about a half hour there's this layer of scum that forms on the top. Well, I'll show you guys how to remove that as well. but. Um, that's the reason you don't want to be super aggressive with it. You don't want to get all that stuff in the water. You want all that stuff to rise to the top and never go back into, never go back into the liquid. You're trying to remove all those impurities, not uh, mix them into the water. And yes, scum. That's exactly what it's called. Or that's what I always called it. Um, okay, cooling down of stock. Uh, the best thing you can cool down stock in is a. Uh, let's see if I have one. Is like a hotel pan, uh, like this. You just pour it in there, and that way you're, you're sure it's cooling down evenly. The general rule for cooling anything down, especially liquids, is you want it to be two inches or less. Uh, this entire pot should fill in here. Now, since it's a thinner liquid, it's going to cool down faster, so it's not as big deal. Like if you're cooling down like clam chowder or something, which will take will take longer. Um, for liquids, it's not as bad. Another thing you can do is cool it down in like Tupperwares if you so choose to. Um, just make sure that you're not you're not filling it up more than like you know a couple inches. That way, you know it's going to cool down safely. Why do you need to cool it down? You need to cool down all food after it's cooked if you're going to use it again because uh, a thing called the temperature danger zone uh, where bad bacteria is able to grow and if it's not cooled down quickly enough um, you get sick or you have the potential to get sick. Uh, let, me, let me speak of this. I watched Mr. Thundercast for about uh, 20 minutes this morning and I had a very enjoyable viewing experience. I really like his cast. I think he deserves some more viewers. so. Uh, please throw that man a follow. I did actually enjoy his cast. I usually don't enjoy casts when I go perusing about. Truly enjoy. I had a really good time, so please go check out that man. Well, it's not kind at all, sir. You put on a good show, so uh, you deserve it. Alright, so we're just waiting. We're just waiting and waiting and waiting. It's going to be a while since we put cold water in there till it simmers. Uh, what else did I talk about? Oh, how to get your liquid out of the pot. That's a really tricky one because you, you don't want any of the scum or the other stuff. Um, if you worked in a professional kitchen, you would have like a chinois and a strainer and stuff, or maybe even pour it through a co like a giant coffee filter uh, to get all this stuff off. Now, if you're working at home, that does not, it does not work. So one thing you can do, uh, especially if you have a friend, this is probably the easiest way to do it, is take... Now, I know we're covering it, but this is not a... It's not breaking the rules. Is take like a half sheet pan or a whole sheet pan or a hotel pan. Have your friend or your wife or your girlfriend or whatever help you, and then you just put put it over like this, and that way you just leave a little uh, lip on the edge of the pot where somebody holds down this on the top, and then you pour out of it, and that keeps all the stuff inside the pot. Um, you can also do the same thing with tin foil if you're alone. It takes a little bit uh, getting used to. Uh, obviously, you're gonna have to use uh, handles because you have to hold the, you have to grab it and hold the tin foil on the outside of the pot. You never want to cover it after it is. Um, it's actually not that bad, Yoinker, because what you do is you turn it off and you let it cool down a little bit, so it's not like touch your skin; it's gonna burn you. And yes, all things are dangerous. Always pour away from yourself. It's another good tip. Always pour away from yourself. So if you're gonna be pouring into this, make sure you're pouring this way, not this way, because that's how you hurt yourself. Can you use cheesecloth? Yes, you could use cheesecloth, absolutely. Although I would say that's something most people don't have. Okay, I see some bubbles coming up, um, so I'm going to turn it down a little bit, so we do not want to boil it under any circumstances. Glad you're joining them, uh, Jamerson. Yes, you can use cheesecloth, but um, I, I mean another thing you can do if you have a strainer is you can just put you can just put a strainer over a bowl and pour out a little bit at a time. Uh, if you're pouring gently and slowly, it's not going to be a big issue. You don't need to use this. 
You don't need to use this at the very start. You use that at the end when you have more uh, stuff in the pot than you do liquid. If you boiled it instead for four hours, it would taste very bitter and weird. Okay, let's talk about... Uh, I won't be able to actually do this live, but I want to talk about how to get rid of the scum on the pot. Let's see if I can find a good way to uh, demonstrate this. Okay, so the basic idea of getting the scum off the top. There will be a white film that shows up on the top. Uh, the best way to get rid of this, maybe I can demonstrate over here. Okay, basically you're taking your ladle. You stick it, you submerge it in the water until it's almost covered. Like almost, you're almost pulling liquid in. And then you just move it in a circle like this. What ends up happening is you tilt it a little bit and the scum falls into the ladle and the water stays. So you're pulling off the least amount of scum, but you just roll it in a circle. The scum pushes to the outside, becomes thicker, and then you can kind of uh, cull it into the ladle and then you pour it into a bowl or the trash or whatever it is. And you do that a few times. You want to do that a couple times while the stock is cooking, but that will remove all of the um, the stuff you don't want in your liquid. You got to call the scum home. That's right. But that's the most effective way to do it without losing stock. Yeah, you can pull it off with a spoon or whatever else, but uh, just rolling rolling the ladle in a circle is the most effective way to do it. Why do we dislike the scum? Because it's all the impurities in the meat. It's all the stuff that you don't want in your liquid. You want your liquid to be pure and tasty. Uh, the scum is kind of bitter and, well, it's disgusting. The scum is like all the fat portions and the little pieces of sinew that come off and the impurities in the meat and all the stuff, bad stuff that was in there. This is why we never stir the stock, we never cover the stock, and we never boil the stock. Boiling causes rapid movement of the water, which causes it to roll into itself. Uh, covering causes the, everything that comes out to push back into the pot. And stirring, exact same thing. You, you just, everything you can do to avoid the stuff that comes to the top going back into the liquid, the better off your stock is going to taste. The stock, I don't put any spices in my stock. Yeah, you can throw garlic or salt or whatever else you want in there, but uh, usually stock is made and then used in another preparation. So you season the second preparation, not the, uh, not the stock itself. Nice, Sidoris. Put a ladle on that scum and bam! No more. All right, so we're just patiently waiting. We see a few bubbles coming up. Yeah, it's getting there. This is the this is the boring part of making stock. You got to make sure you get it before it boils. Yeah, I'm using all the beef trimmings that we had from last week's section where we trimmed up a New York strip and a beef tenderloin. So we're using all the stuff that would have otherwise gone into the trash. Uh, I was gonna do chicken stock too. I just really want to mess with chicken carcass. Like the exact same preparation for chicken. Exact same preparation for chicken. Fish stocks can vary. Um, but all stocks are very easy to do, and if you're going to make a homemade soup or something, you really cannot get better than fresh homemade stock. It is, it is quite amazing uh, how much flavor you can pull out of so little. And then, of course, if you're going to, I mean, if you're going to be spending uh, $70, $90 on a strip steak or something like that, it's a great use of the, the extra bits that you're cutting off. Uh, Ryushin, you don't want to use anything with a filter when you're removing scum. You want to make sure 100% is coming off. Uh, if you have uh, if you have something that's uh, has mesh on it, and if you try to scoop it through, some of that scum is going to fall back into the water and probably reintegrate into the water. So you want to get 100% of it off. So you don't want to use anything that has mesh. Uh, you can also just use a spoon. Um, I'll try to demonstrate that too. You can also use a spoon and just try to go right around the edge of it, right around the edge of the pot and pull off the scum and then put it into something else. But you don't want to use anything mesh. Once again, the whole purpose of the making of the stock is to get all the scum out of the meat and keep all of the flavor. Yes, yeah, so some flowers are real.
You're never going to be 100% scum free, but you want to be as close as you possibly can. And you see we, we have a little bit of movement in the water. Um, it's pretty, pretty common knowledge, but when things heat up, what happens is the, the molecules start moving faster and faster back and forth. This is why you think get things like agitation and boiling uh, and why the water moves so fast. So heating it up gently is going to be the best way to go. Right on, Melodic. Um, I highly encourage people to uh, to do this for themselves, especially if you have stuff laying over. If you like, make a whole chicken and you you debone it. Don't let that carcass go to waste. If you're going to make something else, you can make something really amazing with your ho with your own stock. Uh, the difference for me is night and day. I don't mind using store bought stock at all. In fact, I do it all the time because you don't have six hours to make stock all the time. Hey, and I'm not not a scientist, also not a doctor. I just play one on the internet. What's up, Prixie? Yeah, homemade stock makes amazing rice. That's a good point. If you like rice, uh, it'll definitely be a flavor bomb for your rice if you salt it properly. It really makes great everything. It is it, the great nice thing about stock is if you have all this stuff. Let's say you have like a you have like a family barbecue or something like that and you have all this stuff left over you can make a big batch of stock and cool it down and freeze it and use it whenever you want you can put it into quart containers or whatever the case may be and uh, be good that's right Dr. Honker uh, we starting to get a little bit of bubbling I have to be very sure that it's not uh, not gonna go above a simmer before I stop casting well, stock will stay good for I don't know, five, six, seven days, but I, I'd highly recommend freezing it uh, if you plan on leaving it in the in the fridge for more than a couple days. It doesn't hurt it one bit, and it's extremely easy to unfreeze. You just put it in the pot and melt it. Yeah, absolutely. You can even uh, you can eat it if it's frozen. I mean, it's gonna last at, at least a couple months. Yeah, it's gonna get a little freezer burned, maybe, but. You're freezer burning onto a water-based thing anyway, so it's not like it's destroying the integrity of a meat or something like that. Yeah, you can freeze in ice trays, you can freeze in quart Tupperwares, you can freeze in gallons. Let's say if you're gonna if you're gonna freeze something, make sure you leave about this much space in there. Uh, because, you know, water expands when it freezes, so if you overfill it, it's just going to pop off the lid and uh, be kind of messy. How do I decide what to cook? I decide two months in advance, so there's the Cooking with Frag info link uh, with the rest of the episodes. I think we have three more after this, and then we'll take a two-week break and then have another two-month section. My goal for Cooking with Frag is to build on top of skills that uh, we've demonstrated, so... Uh, I tried to start simple and then build on top of that, and then we'll, in the next month we're going to do the same thing. So I'm going to try to demonstrate a few things the first week that we'll end up using way later on. Let's get a welcome to the Dapper for Dorcas. Thank you very much. I cook every single Saturday at 10 p.m. Pacific, and there's a Cooking with Frag link below the stream that has all of the videos of the day and stuff um, from that. You can see, I hope you can see, inside this pot, you can see it's getting kind of milky. It's getting kind of uh, uh, foggy looking inside of there. That's the scum. That's the scum that we want to rise to the top so we can remove it. Uh, at the end of the day, you want a nice clear liquid. Well, it's going to be tinted brown because of the carrots and the uh, the beef and whatnot. But you don't want it to be milky like this. That's that's bad. If you tasted that right now, it would not taste good. Because the world's not perfect, Furon. I'm sorry. Probably my mislabel. Oh my goodness, let's just have a nice solid wall for everybody that subbed. Thank you very much, everybody.
welcome, welcome. Okay, we're starting to get some bubbles and stuff. You can see, uh, can you see? Yes, you can. You can see these little sections of bubbles. These are going to turn into scum, eventually. As uh, the scum collectors. Uh, I can't I can't show you on the camera but you can see inside of the uh, you can see inside of the pot there's all these what's making it look foggy is all these little white things floating around inside of in, inside of the liquid um, once again that's exactly what we want to get to the top so it forms into one firm layer so we can remove it scum bubbles there you go we're almost there I just gotta make sure I have my temperature right because I really don't want to uh, really don't want to go AFK and boil over my stock or mess it up. It's a good way to go about it, uh, filtering stock through cheesecloth and cryptio, but if you do it right, if you cook it right, uh, there should not be hardly anything left in the inside of the stock uh, if you filter it correctly uh, and pull off the scum off the top. You shouldn't need it. Okay, another thing to note is that there's a lot of fat on beef and chicken and whatever other meat you're going to use. So when you pour it into a container, why you cool it down before you freeze it is because um, just like the scum rises to the top, when you, put, uh, when you put a liquid in a pan and cool it down, the fat is going to rise to the top. So after a day, you're going to have your stock on the bottom and all the fat's going to rise to the top. All you have to do is take a spoon or your hand with a glove or whatever and pull off that is basically a sheet of fat. Um, that's why you don't freeze it directly because all that fat's still in there. We are making a beef stock. Once again, temperatures. Three rolls of talk never cover never stir, never boil. We're looking for the laziest bubble possible on this, which means it's exactly at 170 to 180. And it's going to sit there for a good four hours or so. Save the fat for a fat sheet pie. Whatever you want to do with that fat is up to you. But keep in mind that fat's just, it's, it's just, it's pure fat. You could cook with that fat like cooking fat, but I honestly wouldn't recommend it. Alright, it appears we have a really lazy bubble right now, but uh, I'm going to wait like five minutes to make sure that's where it is. It's not going to be that fat. That fat's also going to have all the vegetable flavor and some of the scum in there. and um, I just I wouldn't recommend using that fat for stuff. The best thing you can do if you want to use uh, use fat is cut the fat off when you uh, prepare your meat, and then render it down at a very low temperature. Um, yes, duck fat, also known as god butter, duck fat is amazing. Render it down in a pot or something really low, uh, so you can then use that. Then you're getting pure fat, not getting any scum or vegetable flavor or anything. Cool if you're on. Well, best of luck being a ferret owner. It is an adventure. Adventure to say the least. What's up, Anoka? I don't know what ducks are doing to produce such amazing fat, but I, I swear it's my favorite cooking medium in the entire culinary world. That duck fat is just so good. Me and chicken are roommates, wolves. Or more accurately, chicken lives with me and my family. I would say the main thing, uh, if you're on, is totally off subject of cooking, but when you get a new ferret, make sure you're handling it a lot and playing with it so it gets very used to you very quickly. It'll be a lot more responsive to do things like be house trained and um, uh, actually kind of do what you want it to. Can we get a welcome to the dapper for Gadmir? Thank you so much.
No problem, McStaller. I am, uh, it's because ducks float. Oh, that witchcraft. That reference. Alright, looks like we have a nice lazy bubble. I'm just, I'm walking away from it for four hours, so we're gonna be, we're gonna be damn sure. So many dapper We're gonna be making French onion soup. I'm not the biggest fan of French onion soup, though I did work in a kitchen that made French onion soup that was 100% legit, so, um, we'll be using, uh, something similar to that recipe. French onion soup is a very simple soup. Uh, the main reason I actually wanted to do French onion was to show how to caramelize onions properly. A lot of people mess that up. I've even seen people in kitchens mess that up. 100% legit, 100% delicious. Uh, caramelized onions are a wonderful thing for lots of things. So that's the real purpose of making French onion, but I thought we had the trimmings so we can make stock and then we can make soup out of it. So it works out good. I personally don't like the crouton on top of my French onion. I hate soggy bread more than any other texture in the world. So I'll just be using cheese. We'll talk about we'll talk about the croutons and stuff like that. The scum rises during the heating phase and the fat rises after. Is anything notable sink? No. The idea in Cryptio is to keep everything from sinking. That's the last thing you want is stuff to sink. So that is the um Okay, we're going to do one thing while it's still very early in the in the cooking phase. We have our right temperature. I know it's the right temperature. So we've been waiting long enough. Before all this scum gets to the top, we're going to top off our pot a little bit more, very gently pouring in as to not disturb the scum. You don't want to do this later because there's a lot of scum in there, but right now there's not very much. We get better yield this way. That is on the borderline edge of don't, uh, don't stir. However, I did not want to, I didn't want to overfill it and then be talking to you guys and have it go into a boil and make a huge mess. So, the scum is all the impurities in the meat. Hey, no problem, uh, Xanthia. The, the soup's really simple. It's basically caramelized onions, um, chicken stock, beef stock, a uh, little sachet of peppercorns, and a couple herbs, and uh, a little bit of a splash of sherry. That's all it is. So much dapper. What's up, Futterwhacking? Melodic main. Thank you everybody for joining today. Uh, I'm just going to stand here for another minute. It's only been, uh, it's been about 45. We'll end in about uh, 10 minutes or so once I'm 110% sure I can step away for four hours. So many damn top ads. But I've really enjoyed doing this cooking with Frag now that we have a more scheduled um, thing. Like I know what I'm doing every week, which is, uh, is a little bit stressful not knowing what I was going to do every week. So we're going to do it this way. Two months, two months of content. Uh, yeah, red wine as well. Um, two months, two months of content, uh, followed by a two week break, followed by two more months of content. And that's how it's going to be. Can't cook on links while I'm out here, chicken. Yes, you can mental bill. Absolutely, you can. You can use uh, ramekin and make a pastry dish top for certain. Uh, there's in fact many people that do use puff pastry for their French onion soup. It's a very popular technique for doing it. Pretty much, I like to dip bread into soup. I don't like soup on or bread on to or top of my soup. I just I can't I can't handle soggy bread. I love 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 bread but I can't do soggy bread. Like I, I, I can eat carbs all day. I can, I can eat a loaf of bread. I can eat, uh, I can eat a whole baguette to myself. Um, it's just something about soggy bread. It really irks me. Uh, probably because I love bread so much and the texture of it. Bread pudding's different because it's more like a pudding. I like bread pudding. I'm just talking about bread that's wet. Uh, it's not good. 
I'm, I'm fine with using panadas and stuff like that, where you'd use a thickener with bread and all that. Just bread itself that's wet is not okay by me. You can see already we're starting to have scum form on the top, which is good. Bread pudding is delicious. It's just thickened with bread. Uh, it seems like a weird concept, but it's good. Well, bread pudding has many different types of bread pudding. It's usually like raisins and rum. Uh, raisins and rum and all sorts of other delicious stuff. Cinnamon kind of baked in. It's kind of like a, a wet cake, I guess. All the carbs. Have all of them. Look at my scum. Scum hype. Yeah, we're starting to get scum forming. We're at a lazy bubble. So uh, I'll probably come up in about two hours and clear off the scum, and then another two hours we'll uh, cool it down. I like raisins in dessert, but uh, past that, usually, usually not. But to each their own. That's the wonderful thing about food, is that you can take anything and make anything. And if it tastes good to you, it's good. Um, knowing how to make the basics certainly helps. Knowing how to make rice and stock and all those little base elements uh, can definitely help you as a cook. Yeah, precariously prepared stock. Just let me go into the oven real quick. And here it is. Uh, it's kind of an interesting part about doing a live cooking show is there is no editing, there's no, uh, there's no, oh, here it is what it looks like when it's prepared and stuff like that, so. Am I going to show out a flambe at some point? Maybe. I don't find it to be very hard or exciting. It's just fire. Yeah, this way there is also video games, that's true. Uh, Yoinker, probably, probably not. Okay, I can just talk about what you're looking for in your stock is the least amount of scum possible. You want a clear-ish liquid. You don't want any fogginess in the liquid. It's going to be dark because of the carrots and the beef, but you want it to be looking like it's, you can see, see through it, basically. Um, the more, the more vegetables and beef that you add to it, the darker color it's going to be. Uh, chicken stock usually ends up being a lot more yellow. If you add things like whole onions uh, or onion skin, it can turn it browner. Um, maybe you don't nail it the first time, but the more scum you get off during the cooking portion, the better off your stock is going to taste and look. All right, I got the perfect lazy bubble. We're gonna we're gonna call that good. Can you overcook stock? I will answer that first. Yes, yes, you can. It depends on the type of stock. Um, chicken stock you'll generally cook for four to six hours. Um, if you cook it much longer than that, it gets a little bit too chickeny. Uh, beef stock you can leave you can leave on the stove overnight if you so choose to. I don't recommend that if you're a home cook, but uh, unless you have a very large pot with a lot of water. Uh, veggie stock is the exact same way as this. Veggie stock, you really only want to cook for about two to four hours because you're just trying to pull out the vegetables. Um, beef stock, veal stock, anything with bones, uh, you usually can leave overnight. Let me assure you, Archie Jameson, you are not the first person to make that comparison. But thank you. But yeah, okay, that's, that's actually a really good point. You don't want to cook chicken stock for more than about six hours. Uh, fish stock usually cooks a lot quicker as well. What veggies are good for veggie stock? Okay, let's go down the list. Onions, carrots, celery, which is the base for regular mirepoix, 50% onions, and then 25%, 25%. Um, celery ac, which is celery root. Uh, turnips, parsnips, uh, mushrooms. Um, Really, anything you can think of can go in there. 
any trimmings you have. You can use the ends of your kale or whatever you want to make vegetable stock. Uh, something I sometimes do is if I have end pieces left over, stuff that's not normally going to use, for example, the ends of celery or something like that, and if it's cleaned and stuff, you can you can throw that in the freezer and use it for stock uh, later. I wouldn't really recommend cabbage. If you bite into a piece of cabbage, it's kind of bitter. You want to avoid bitter things. We're going to be using this stock for soup next week. You can also use it for any sauce you want to. You can use it for uh, cooking rice in. Um, it's basically just flavored water. So whatever you want to use it for, go for it. At the end of the day, it is flavored water. That's uh, that's what stock is. Uh, not to to underwhelm it, but it's extremely good flavored water. Yep, exactly. Herbert Dorf would be the exact same ratio of water to rice if you're using stock because we're removing all the scum which could hinder the cooking process and we're also removing the fat after it cools down so we have we basically just have flavored water artichokes could work although overcooked artichokes don't taste very good I have not put artichokes in stock they're kind of expensive so I would think unless you're using the trimmings from the leaves or something I don't know exactly it's like veggie or meat juice correct is stock good for marinating steaks um, if you're going to make a sauce out of it or a marinade, it could be the the liquefying agent for it. All right, I'm gonna wait till the top of the hour, and then we'll uh, we'll get to the get to the gaming tonight. Um, I believe I believe I'm going to play a little bit of Isaac tonight. I'm going to start a, another playthrough of The Walking Dead tomorrow. I said we'd do some new stuff this weekend, and that's what I'm going to do. It's been it's been a while. I've never finished I've never finished episode five, so I really wanted to play through it again. I was very distracted last time I played it too, so I don't remember very much of it. But Walking Dead is great because it's really kind of like watching a movie and playing a game, so ready to watch a movie with all you guys. The point and click one, Stroke of Love. Yeah, Walking Dead's really good. Um, yeah. I have not played episode five. We did we did one through four in one sitting, so I kind of just in took it all. I don't really remember much of the story. I didn't talk to everybody, so we'll take our time. We will take our time. Oh yeah, it's definitely definitely an emotional roller coaster. You see that scum right there? Mm, I see you scum. Alright guys, I'm going to kill the cast, I'm going to go downstairs, I'm going to set up, I'm going to come up and eat a little bit of food and make sure all my stuff's ready to cool this down. Um, thank you everybody for watching Cooking with Frag Dave, like, probably the easiest episode I've ever done. Beef stock, uh, same combo for chicken stock, veggie stock, all that stuff. Very easy way to make something very flavorful for yourself. So we'll be back in about two minutes, and uh, then we'll get started. 